All right, everyone. How's everybody doing on this Wednesday night? How are you doing? I'm doing great. I, I sound like Joey there. How you doing? <laughs> 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 well, it's great to be with you again on this Wednesday night. It feels like we haven't been here in a while. Um, you've been traveling. I haven't been here in you a while. You haven't been here in a while. Uh, man, we have had some great services. Uh, it's just been great. The last few weeks been totally different. We had two guest speakers, and then we've also had a Wednesday night. We, we canceled was it what, two weeks ago, and then we had uh, Gene Garcia with us last week. So uh, this is kind of feeling a little normal. We're getting into the back to normal. Yes. It feels good. I was driving the other day. I was driving to the church, and it felt normal <laughs> for the first time in a long time because I was in a little bit of a routine. So um, well, I hope you're doing well tonight. Today is actually a really special day for us. Uh, today is actually, uh, we have been here at Gateway eight years. This is our eight year anniversary to be here. And uh, I think we got a picture of the night. It was a Sunday night. It was August 5th, 2012. And we were voted in as the new pastors here. And uh, what a, a lot's happened since then. It was an incredible night, too. It was. It was. And Such it, a God moment. It was. So powerful. It, it felt like, you know, we've talked many times about, I, I really felt like the Lord said, the way I brought you here, it was just so supernatural. That's what has to keep you in the difficult times. And yeah. so there's been some difficult times. Absolutely. There's been some difficult moments. Uh, you know, we're in a crazy moment right now. Yeah. Uh, but there's also been so many great God moments along the way. And that's what I love. And, yes. you know, I was thinking back to... You know, a lot of times when we, I, I was talking with someone this week and they said, you know, I, I'm not, they were saying they're, they're not the kind of person that like knew from a certain age what they were going to be for the rest of their lives. Like they didn't know at age, you know, 12, they were going to be a doctor and then they went on to be a doctor or whatever the case may be. They've just kind of worked wherever. And, um, and you know, for, and, and you know what, the great thing is that God uses that and God takes us through life through different avenues and, and it just he has a journey and even though we may not know God still uses that and uses us in a powerful way that's right but I was reflecting back and I was sharing with them you know when I was 17 I felt the Lord prompt my heart to go into to be a pastor so from 17 I knew I was going to be a pastor um, but early you know my whole life my you know, my mother and my parents have been praying over me, believing over me, and, and uh, they knew there was, my mother told me my whole life, you've got a call of God on your life. Of course, my parents are pastors, so maybe you say, well, that's a given. Well, we all have a call of God on our lives. It may not, to, may not be to be a pastor, mm -hmm. but we all have a calling on our lives. And so, but I remember at the age 17 knowing that, and then going off to Bible school uh, a year later, and then going through you know, ministry school and internships and then uh, moving from Florida and then coming to Tennessee and then like kind of almost starting over and because uh, I was really involved at the church we were at in Florida and and it's so God had done so much in my life there and, um, you know, I got saved there. I'd, I mean, I just really grew and mature there. So a lot had happened there. And, and then it wasn't till I was 32 years old that we came here and God opened the door for us to come here. And I was thinking back, you know, from 17 to 32, that's quite a journey yeah. of going, hey, God, when's that door going to open? Right. When's that door going to open? And I remember, the I, me I remember the first four weeks that we were here that there was just this, like, I was just... I mean, I was just like overwhelmed, like, okay, God, I'm finally here. This is what you've called me to do. I'm finally here. We're finally here. Now what do we do? <laughs> it was like we got to the starting. We finally got to the starting point. Right. You know, 15 years after God had called me to, to be a pastor, and, you know, now we're finally at the starting point. And now it's like, oh, my goodness, now now what do we do? Now we've got we've to do stuff. God, what do you want us to do? So. Right. A lot transpired in that season and in the seasons that we've been in here. We've been here for the last eight years. And, mm -hmm. and what are some maybe some of the things that have really stood out to you uh, over the last over the last eight years? What, what has God it, it, from your perspective? 
I mean, I think God has done a lot of amazing things, not just um, in our lives. You know, I think everybody knows our story, or most of everyone knows, knows our story that um, we prayed for the Lord to bless us with children. And it wasn't until this season in, you know, pastoring and being at Gateway that we um, that we received both of our miracles. Um but God just has done some awesome things in our church. You know, we've seen people healed in their bodies from cancer, from different disease. Um, we've seen God just move um, in people's lives, transform their lives, come from being in bondage, come from being, you know, um, in depression, and then just being completely transformed. Um, and now they're serving Jesus wholeheartedly, 100%. And so it's been amazing, you know, just um, just being able to see God work, not just through us, but through his church, you know, because we're yeah. all the body of Christ. And so just watching the Lord move through every single one of us and touch this community, touch people's lives. Yeah. And, and I would just say this, too, uh, for everyone that's watching, you know, if you're obviously if you're watching on Facebook, hey, throw us throw a comment in there. Maybe if you've been a part of the journey with us, what has God done in your life in the last eight years if you've been here? Or what has God done in your life if you haven't been a part of uh, the, our church? Uh, what has God done in your life in, in the season that you're in? Uh, because we want to talk about that tonight. Um, a few things that stood out to me was that, you know, I really, it, it felt like we, uh, at least for me, I, I felt like I stepped into a different level of trusting God. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I knew who he was, but it felt like, you know, I had all the knowledge, I had, I had studied, I had, you know, been to Bible school, I had I'd gotten that part. But the relationship of God is built on trust. And if you want to see him do something powerful in your life, you've got to step out and trust him, yes. which is like the hardest thing to do. Yes. You would think it would be the easiest thing to do. No. You would think it was like, well, we know he's going to take care of us. It's the easiest thing to yeah. do. Yeah. But some of the things that really stood out to me and, uh, you know, if you would just kind of, you know, we're. We're kind of reminiscing a little bit about eight years, cause uh, and it's it's a big deal. I mean, every for me, every year is a big deal. Yes. Every year, I t I'm like, he I wakes up in the morning, <laughs> and it's like our wedding anniversary <laughs> type of scenario. He wakes up in the morning, he's like, "Today's our anniversary," and I'm like, "No, it's not. It was back in July." And he says, "No, <laughs> our anniversary for being at Gateway," and oh so it's very goodness. very special and very dear to our hearts. Um, just knowing that, you know, God has brought us here and he has kept us here and he will continue to keep us here. Yes. Hey, do you want to say hi to just a few people too? Uh, Miss Jan, Miss Jan, uh, hammock. She, she was, uh, she worked in the bookstore with me. She's on here right now. And I worked in the bookstore at, uh, at Brownsville for uh, a, a little while, a few years. And she introduced me to the greatest, they don't make them anymore, but the greatest milkshake a pineapple milkshake at Sonic. Ooh. I don't think they do them anymore. <laughs> but she introduced me to it, and I thought, that that sounds disgusting. But I got one, and then I've been hooked. And now I can't get them <laughs> anymore. So, Jan, thank you for that. So, uh, But, you know, uh, God's been so faithful. So a few things stood out to me was just the faithfulness. I really believe, you know, I went through a season believing God, asking the Lord, God, would you... And I was looking for an answer for something, and the Lord just began to show and remind me how mm -hmm. faithful he's been yeah. to me, to us, to our mm -hmm. church, to mm -hmm. to our lives, and how he has gone before us and gone behind us, how he's protected us, how he's done things that we didn't even realize. Yes. Uh, so that was just very evident. Yeah, and the other thing that really stood out to me was that, you know, we learned in this season, we, st we came in uh, young, green, uh, first pastorate. I mean, this is our <laughs> first pastorate. Yes. And um, I mean, you looked really young. I looked like I was 12. Yes. I mean, I still look like I'm 12. Sh yes, <laughs> you're sure. That's right. I don't know what that makes me, but. I'm 34. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I have grown. We came in and we had been believing God for some things. And then, you know, we, we prayed for years. You yes. Know, it was quite a while six years and in the season being here the lord answered the prayer of blessing us with with our first daughter yes uh, with our only daughter <laughs> and then 
uh, three years later, our son. And that, that was so powerful. And the yes. thing that was so amazing about that was people coming up to us and saying, God answered my prayer because I was praying for you. Yes. You absolutely. know, from our perspective, he answered our prayer. Mm -hmm. But when you share your journey, then people get to partake mm -hmm. in God answering not just your prayer, but the prayers they've been praying for you. Yes. And I, I never thought of that. I, mean, I was like, whoa, that's it's great. It was awesome. We had a, a really just an army of people praying around us and for us. And when the Lord answered, it was it was a whole church, whole body, everybody celebrating because God had just done a miraculous thing. And yeah. so it was it was an awesome day. You know, DJ shared that, you know, God's been bringing him through just some of the slow pain of of just rejection from from his teen years. Mm. And, uh, you know, I remember DJ being on Sunday night, Wednesday nights, mm -hmm. we'd have, you know, Bible studies or just times. And I remember just hearing from DJ the the depth. Oh, yes. I mean, he, he DJ, so you know the wisdom, word. Yes. Yeah, he just has that yes, knowledge. Absolutely. And, uh, it's just it's powerful. And so, mm -hmm. you know, we're uh, it's so good to see how God we were talking about um, even Robbie and Dana, Robbie and Dana Campbell, who are just I mean, there's some are most dearest people to oh and we here's the thing is we love everybody in our church yeah so we say everybody's the dearest <laughs> people to us <laughs> you know it, the truth is we love them all yes uh but robbie and dana were a really neat story about you know here dana who had struggled for so long with being around people mm -hmm. and god had freed her mm -hmm. and they came the first time yes. and then they rushed out and i, and I remember t i told leslie i was like you got it. We got to get on. I remember they came a second time and I said, listen, if you've got to run all the way to their car, right, whatever, chase after them, we got to connect with them. And that's what she did. I and chased after them, ran out to their car and they put the car down the window down just a little bit. And she goes, hey, you know, <laughs> because the crazy pastor's wife. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, we slowly connected with them and yes. we have seen God do so much in their lives. Yes. Um, it's just been amazing. And now Dana works with mm -hmm. us robbie's a, one of our uh, board member with us yes. they're just i love seeing and we continue lives. to see so much growth yes. and maturity yes. in their lives and so that's the awesome part about where god is never finished with us he continues to pour into us and grow us yes uh, miss kathy said a deeper trust in god and i know he has taken care of me and a confidence in knowing he answers my prayer Amen. and so um I mean that that's 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 it. I love Miss Kathy too. So. She's awesome. And Dave, who's behind the camera here, he's he's he has helped make this possible. He's done such a great job. So um, so we've seen growth, um, maturity, even in our own lives, mm -hmm. in our family. Our family's physically actually grown. Yes. Um, you know, we've grown as a couple. We've grown in ministry. Absolutely. Um, I, when we first got here, I think too there was a little bit of. Um, even from maybe from your perspective of like how do I, mm -hmm. how do I do the role? Yes. And yes. I think you were pretty comfortable being my support. Yes. And then that has blossomed into you becoming the worship leader a year after we had been here. Yeah. And then you becoming so much more. Now you've run in everything just about you know. Every role I you report can to think her of. Now. <laughs> like hey, can we do this? But there's been growth there too. Absolutely. In in this season. So yes. um and that's exciting. Mm -hmm. So uh and I can't wait to see what God has in store. We were talking today about retirement of all things. <laughs> She's trying to give she thinks I'm old, okay? No. I'll be forty one in October, okay. No, you just gotta think about the future. No, not that old. <laughs> so she <laughs> she she said, When do you think you're gonna retire? I said, I don't know if I if if it's sixty five, we still got twenty four more years to go. So she goes, I don't know about that, you know. So anyway, but uh, God has been faithful. Yes. God has shown us so much. And here's what I want you, you your takeaway to be. I want your takeaway to be that God has something in store for you, mm -hmm. and that your journey, no matter where you think you're going, God wants to teach you things in the journey. Yes. In the day to day, in 2020, mm -hmm. He wants to take things from 2019 and 2018. He wants to 
move in your life if you'll let them. Because mm-hmm. we've had difficult seasons in ministry, difficult mm-hmm. seasons as a couple, difficult seasons with our extended family, difficult seasons with hurt and pain and rejection, you mm-hmm. name it. Yeah. But the journey that God takes you on, if you'll trust him in the journey, oh my goodness, he will do some powerful things in your life. Yes. And so um, tonight we wanted to kind of now shift to what we were going to talk with you about. And we're talking about level up. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're talking about one of the things is, you know, in order to really, you know, I, I, I call it going to the next level. Mm-hmm. So if you want to grow and mature in your walk, if you want to continue in the journey, um, you can't quit. That's right. And you've got to stop, got to stop doubting. Mm-hmm. You've got to stop giving into fear mm-hmm. and anxiety. And that's easy to say and difficult to do. Yes. And so we want to just talk just for just a few moments about a few different things uh a few things we want to talk about three key relationships and then we're also going to we're going to go to the book of james again and uh, we want to talk about three key relationships that we need to grow in Mm -hmm. and that i think are absolutely crucial to your walk to you growing and maturing to you going to the next i say going to the next level it's not like you know you're not playing a video game with god and you know all be clear level one but there is maturity we do grow right yes we do grow in our walk we grow in our maturity or we start out as as an infant if you will Mm -hmm. and then we grow even in in what we even uh, get out of the word and so Mm -hmm. there is a growth and so just three relationships that i think are are absolutely so key for every believer that that we all need to develop and the first one is the holy spirit Mm -hmm. um you know, sometimes I think we 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 say, oh, you know, we talk about the Holy Spirit, especially in the realm that we're in. We're in a Pentecostal church uh, with these, you know, where our church is an Assembly of God church. And so many times it's it, we, we throw the Holy Spirit into this category of all these other things mm-hmm. that we've seen attached to the Spirit of God. And uh, the truth is that we need to grow in our relationship with the Spirit of God. When Jesus left, he said, I'm leaving you a comforter, I'm leaving you a helper, Mm -hmm. I'm leaving you the one. And so why would we not Mm -hmm. want the Spirit of God, and not only not want, but understand that we absolutely need the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Uh, I always look at the disciples, they walk with them, and yet Jesus said, okay, you've done a lot, but in order for you to accomplish the great mission, the great commission Mm -hmm. in order for you to do that you need my spirit yes Mm -hmm. and my spirit not just me walking with you because that that feels comfortable but my spirit living and residing in you Mm -hmm. and i I need that to be alive in you so that you can accomplish what i've called you to do and and i can't help but think about in 2020 Mm -hmm. more than ever and for the years to come i just feel like there's this awakening like if you've fallen asleep on the job of the commissioning of what god wants you to do it's now time to tap into the great commission of what he has called you to do as a believer of G- in jesus christ that's right when the moment you accept the lord mm-hmm. he has commissioned you yes you signed up whether you knew it or not right mm-hmm. it's not just your ticket in to heaven but i love that when you think about okay lord how can you use me in 2020 well, you need to develop, continue. I mean, that relationship with the Holy Spirit is so key because the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit of God inside of you is evident to everyone around you, right? That's Love, right. joy, peace, you know, long-suffering, all, all that. That's right. That is so critical. But we also need the power of the Holy Spirit, the power yes. of, of God working in and in, in through us. And so uh, uh, the Holy Spirit lives inside of us and makes us spiritually alive and mm-hmm. let me tell you that's the part that's crucial yeah because any relationship can feel dead yes but the spirit of god inside of us makes our spirit come alive that's leads right. us it guides us it's the great adventure yes absolutely. and so uh you know it's so important for us to continue to develop and and seek after uh lord how lord, i want to know you more I want to. I want Lord. I want you to develop me more, mm-hmm. and I think that's been key in the journey we've been on. You know, in eight years, um, you know, you either can just exist, mm-hmm. or you can seek Lord. How can I thrive in my walk, in that's my relationship? Right. 
And I believe God even opens doors for you mm -hmm. when you lean on him. You make yourself available to him. And I think about many times the opportunities that have that have opened for us in this in our community. Mm -hmm. Man, we've just seen like countless times the Lord just open up a door to us, access for us to minister to our community, whether it's through food, whether it's through an outreach, through an event, through, you know, whatever the case may be. Yeah. God has just blessed us and opened up these doors. And I just simply say, Lord, let's, uh, we just want to stay available, whatever you, whatever you have for us. And, and that goes for, you know, every church in our community. Yeah. I, I believe as our churches stay available, the Lord's going to give them access to the, our community. And, and that's my heart. Amen. Is is that we would, our churches here in our community would, would make ourselves available, to the Lord to be used here in this community. Um, That's right. And I, I think there's some great open doors that God has for us. So. Amen. Okay, so get off my little thing here. All right. So uh, so the Holy Spirit, the relationship with the Holy Spirit, is so key. The second relationship is really the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. That relationship is is so important. Absolutely. I, and maybe you can share too. How do you feel? Um, that relationship with the body of Christ, why do you feel that's so crucial for us to have relationship with as a body? You know, what what do you what well do I you think see? you hit you hit the word there, you know, the key part there is the word body. And so therefore, you know, a, a, a complete body cannot function fully to the full its potential if you're missing part, right? Yeah. So if I'm missing my leg, then yes, I could probably still continue living, but I will have limitations. You know, um, if I'm missing my fingers, if I'm missing toes, whatever the case is, I would not be able to fully live or accomplish um, really what the Lord has set for me to for me to do. Right. And so just a way in the physical, how the body is all together i think that is how the body of christ is we all need each other we all encourage each other we pray for each other we inspire each other we stand in the gap in prayer for each other um and so god moves through unity he moves through us being together in one mind in one spirit and so um i know for me when i don't get to um interact with you know and not just necessarily corporate worship but just even interact with small groups you know um getting together you know our ladies our gateway ladies virtual calls on zoom and just really getting together and getting in the word um you know we talk about iron shar sharpening iron and so it is so important for um the church to be united um, and for us to be in fellowship with each other in order to accomplish the goal that God has for us. The enemy, the only thing he wants is isolation, right? He wants yeah. us to be separated from the body of Christ because that is where we can be entrapped and, um, and then just fall into depression, fall into anxiety, fall into fear, fall into all these different things. And so I think it's important for us to, you know, really um invest in, in making sure that we're staying connected connected to your church connected with your pastor connected with your brothers and sisters in christ um all well, over the world and, and two to thrive in your faith to thrive in your walk you can't do it alone that's right you can't do it alone uh the body was designed right uh, the thing i love is that jesus right even though he's not here he is the head Okay, I know everybody talks about the body and they're, you know, calling out what body part they are, you know. I'm the big toe, I'm the pinky, you know what I mean? I'm the whatever, you know. Uh, but he's the head. And then the church, the, the followers of Jesus Christ, the believers in Jesus Christ, they're the body. And so many times what happens when we isolate, you're absolutely right. Uh, some, uh, The power of God can't move in and through us the same way as when we're functioning together as a body. And, yeah. you know. I love I love our church, but mm -hmm. I also love the church. Amen. Um, and I love when when churches come together as mm -hmm. one body, and, yeah. and I, I absolutely love that because something powerful happens in unity. So when we develop the relationship with the Holy Spirit, when uh, when we develop that relationship, we l we don't lack power anymore, mm -hmm. right? Because the Holy Spirit is the thing; He's the, the Spirit of God inside of us gives us the power to walk out to give us discernment, to give us wisdom, to give us peace, to give us joy. He gives us the power. And then 
even that relationships with one another, mm-hmm. uh, the Holy Spirit gives us purpose and meaning. Mm-hmm. And then relationships w- with one another, you know, it's been interesting during this whole season of us not being able to gather. Uh, you know, our church is gathers on Sunday, but for a while we couldn't. Yeah. So we went outside, mm-hmm. and the r- I was very intentional on we have to gather. However we need to do it. If we need to sit 10 feet apart in a field, Mm -hmm. we need to gather. Something happens when we gather. Yes. Something happens when the body comes together, right? There's there's something, and the Word of God even talks to that. It says where two or more are gathered. That's right. My spirit is there, right? I am there with you. And there's there's something human that happens when you know when you see someone you're like oh, there's my brother there's my sister like mm-hmm. when you encourage each other when you talk when you fellowship, and so uh, you know however you want to see this season I, I see it I see this whole season as an opportunity and you could say well you know it's the enemy trying to, to separate and divide the church I mean you could get into all that maybe that's true, but I see everything that's happening as an opportunity for us to let's be flexible, mm-hmm. right? We, we, I go on a lot of mission trips. Right? Every year I mm-hmm. go on a mission trip, and Mike King, who's our, uh, he's a great missionary down in um, Columbia, Tennessee, he goes on every single trip that I go on, and he gives this spiel to our teams every single year. He goes, stay flexible. Stay, that's the key, right? When you're traveling, stay flexible. And you know what? The body of Christ needs to stay flexible. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, I understand, you know, I'm not talking about giving up, you know, rights and all that. Kind of. I'm just saying, as we stay flexible, let the Lord work in and through us, mm-hmm. powerful things are going to happen. So when we develop the relationship of the Holy Spirit, we continue to develop that, and then the relationship of the body. Those are two crucial relationships that we absolutely need. Yes. And then the third one, and we have some, some great comments going on here, uh, the third one is the Word of God. Mm-hmm. The Word of God. Yeah. Uh, I've I've shared this story before. Going home to my dad's church, I wish you know I got to come up with more stories. <laughs> it's a good story though. <laughs> Do you have a better story? <laughs> just say it. <laughs> just say it. <laughs> it's like it's a bad story, <laughs> but I just it's it always stood out to me. I learned from from going from going home to my parents' church, speaking at my my dad's church in Central Falls, Rhode Island, CLC. Um, and we'd come home. I remember the first time Leslie came with me. She's like, I am not getting up there and speaking. And I'm like, that's kind of what we have to do. It's what we do. When we come home, we say something in front of the church. We, we greet them, give them a little update of how what's going on in our lives. But I remember my dad said, Why don't you, I want you to share a little bit today. And so I get up there and I shared a bunch of stories and talked about some awesome God things. And, and I said, well, what do you think? And he said, it was great. But you didn't include any scripture in what you were saying. And uh, and it was good criticism. It was constructive criticism. And what he said to me is he said, the word is the thing, mm-hmm. right, that uh, divides the soul and the spirit, right? The word is the thing that cuts through. Yes. The word is the thing that pierces. Yes. So when we understand that we need to develop the relationship we have with the word of God, we need to constantly be in it. We need to be in the word. We need to be devouring it because that is the thing that changes our lives. That's right. Me getting up on a Sunday morning and saying a bunch of good stuff, giving my opinions, is not going to change anyone's life. No. The word of God, though, is the thing that's going to yes. break the yoke, yes. right? The anointing of God, the mm-hmm. word of God is the thing that's going to pierce the heart. The that's word of right. God is the thing that's going to bring the change. Mm-hmm. And so that's why it's so crucial that we have these three relationship and we continue to develop them that's right so um what, what else do we have anybody else you want to read any of these uh yeah miss mary says that in growing in christ we need to be flexible enough to be used by god in the body so that god is able to use us in any part that's good Amen. And then Miss Kathy says, this is a church that loves and cares for each other. Amen. Yes. We're very. We're pretty loving. Very blessed, yeah, yeah. to have a loving church. There was only one church that I think was more loving, which was my parents' church. Because. I didn't go to his parents' p- church, so it doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> you had to hug and kiss everybody on the cheek every single Sunday. That's a cultural thing. It is a cultural <laughs> thing. 
Because we grew up in the Italian culture. So <laughs> there you go. Even though I'm not. But uh, listen, when uh, if you don't have a good relationship with the Bible, you're going to lack clarity. That's you're right. going to lack... Uh, you're going to lack clarity about your future. Mm -hmm. You're going to uh, even feel a little bit in a fog at times. Mm -hmm. You're going to, uh, and often uh, you're going to lack the faith necessary mm -hmm. to experience breakthrough in your spiritual life. Yeah. And so it's crucial to have that piece of the puzzle in yeah, your life, I that, mean that relationship. Do you know that in different and other um, religions, people memorize their what they believe is their scripture their bibles or whatever and so one of the things that tends to be such a difficult thing with christians is that because we don't get into the word then we fail to really and truly know what we believe yes and so it's easy for us to be confused it's easy for us to be moved because we don't yeah. truly know the fundamentals of what we believe in and and that is so important for us to be in the word. That's why yes. it's so important to be in the word because we need to know that we know that we know that we know who God is for us and in our lives. And so nothing, nothing can shake us. When the word of God even tells us, the Bible tells us that we're to hide the word of God in our hearts so yes. that we don't sin against him, right? You got to know, you got to have it digested in you. And here's the thing is it's a, per it, the word of God is a perspective shifting. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's unlike anything else. Mm -hmm. And I always think many times when the Lord speaks to me through the word or, or speaks to my heart about something and I'm like, ooh, a conviction, mm -hmm. right? Or I, I want you to do this. God, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. I want you to do this. And I think if anyone else were to tell me this, I probably would push back, right? Maybe even get offended. But it's when the, when the Lord speaks to us, when the yeah. Spirit of God speaks to us, you can't push back from it. I mean, you That's can. Right. But you can't deny it. That's right. Right? And you're not going to get, you know, you're not going to go like, well, I don't like you anymore. I'm not going to talk to you. <laughs> it's so important that as we invite the Lord into our lives, mm -hmm. not just once a week, but daily, moment by moment, he brings clarity to our lives. He leads and guides us. And, and you know, I had heard that my whole life, and I, I didn't put it into practice until I was in my, really, probably in, in, into my 20, early 20s. Because I, I was always living on an experience or a mm -hmm. moment, and the Lord never in intended for us just to live on just an experience or a moment. He yeah. says, every day I want you to encounter me and experience me. I, every day I want to give you that fresh manna. That's and so right. Let's turn to uh, James chapter 1. Mm -hmm. We're going to look at verse, uh, start with verse 6. We're going to just share a little bit tonight with you and not keep it too much longer. But um, we're going to dive into this. Remember, James, James, the brother of Jesus, James... Uh, the leader of the early church, the church in Jerusalem. Um, this is this is the book we're reading. So out of James ch chapter 1, verse 6, it says this. Uh, it says, But when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Mm. Be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalties is unsettled as a wave of the sea, that is blown and tossed by the wind. Mm. And so uh, right here, right here, let me read that again. Uh, make sure that your faith is in God alone. You know, it, you read that and you think, well, who else would my faith be in? Mm -hmm. Well, the truth is our faith is in us. Or our yeah. faith is in something mm -hmm, or God. someone else. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you got to boil faith down. Fa you boil it down to trust. Like, who's your trust in? Mm -hmm. Let your trust be in God alone. That's right. I, in this year, I mean, I don't have to tell you, but I can tell you that, you know, we've got the elections coming up. We've got so much stuff happening in the news and politics. Look, faith in a, a cure, faith in a, the right leader, you know, faith in God alone. That is the thing that's crucial in this moment, that's like right. never before. That's right. Uh, we can... Uh, if we put our faith and trust in him, it will never waver, right? Our, our lives, uh, I mean, it's, it's so cr crucial. So, um, sorry, did I jump? I jumped the, oh, I did. I did. All right, hey, let's go back up to, <laughs> Dave's looking at me like, hey, what you do? You, you missed the first <laughs> slide here, right? I'm no, sorry. 
All right. James let's, 1 5. Let's go back to 1 5, right? Sorry. Let's, let's start there. All right, you read 1 5. All right. Fact 1 says, Sorry, God Dave. wants to speak to me. And it says, If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. Yes. Thank goodness he doesn't rebuke us for asking, right? He's there. He's like, hey, ask me, ask, ask. Mm-hmm. So the first fact we want to we want to share with you is that that God wants to speak to you. That's right. God wants to speak to us. Mm-hmm. Understand that God wants to speak to you. You know, the hardest thing is is um, when I'm talking to someone, and they're saying, I really want to know what to do, and they want to hear from God. I know the desire is there. Yes. I know the desire. They want God. Just if you would just tell me what to do. I'll do it. And I know and I wish I knew the answer mm-hmm. that God had for them because I would tell them, hey, here's what you got to do. I don't know it. Yeah. I don't know it. But it, I, I love this. The promise of God is that if you need wisdom, mm-hmm. if you need direction, if you need clarity, the our generous God, right, he'll give it to you and he's not going to rebuke you for asking. And so here's what I want to encourage you with coming from someone from a couple, from two individuals that prayed for almost six years for a breakthrough, don't give up. Keep yes. asking. And I'll tell you that we changed. I changed. I even changed how I prayed mm-hmm. in that season. Yeah. I went from a general asking or a general, okay, you know, whatever makes my wife happy, God, just give her whatever's going to make her happy, to God, I take authority that you have. I know w- that your plan and your purpose that you have something good for us, God, that you want to give us. Ch- in our case, it was a child. And w- we pray. I prayed with authority, and something shifted in that moment. Amen. I'll also say that you also have to lay something down. And there was a moment where I had to lay something down. Yeah. And in every breakthrough in my life, I had to lay something down. Yeah. Maybe it was um, you know, my trust in me, that I'm going to trust you, Lord, or place or, or a thing, whatever it was, I had to lay something down, yeah. put it on the altar, surrender it. And so um, understand, the first thing we want to let you know is that God wants to speak to you. Mm-hmm. It seems very, well, of course he does. No, here's the thing is, God wants to speak to you today. Amen. God wants to speak to you in the midst of what you're going through. That's God right. wants to speak to you and bring clarity and wisdom to your situation. Yes. God, our Heavenly Father, right? He wants to speak to the situation you're going through. That's he right. wants to give you the wisdom you need. And as you ask him the promise, this yes. is what you hold to. God, your promise is that as I ask, you're going to answer. You're not going to run from me. You're going to run towards me, right? right? God, when I call on your name, you're going to answer. Amen. Lord, when I come to you wholeheartedly seeking you, you're going to answer. And that's what you need to cling to. So understand that God wants to speak to you yes hold to that whatever you're going through right now i i wish i had the answer i wish you could say i this is what i need and i could say lord what it what's the an- okay here's your answer i wish i could do that but that's not how it works i mean sometimes it works but that's not how it works right yeah. that's not usually how it works god wants to speak to you he wants to develop something in you he wants to move in your life he wants to speak to you it's part of your journey because as we've journeyed We've had those moments. Yeah. It's, it's been hard. The waiting is just not fun. No. But it's so important that you let the Lord speak to you. And I love that the Amen. promise of God is that I will speak to you. Okay. Now let's go to the second one. Okay. The second one is okay. I have okay. to grab hold of it. Yes. And yes. this was when we read James 1, 6. Mm-hmm. But when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God <coughs> alone. Do not waver, for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Yes. You know, I went to the beach, <laughs> and I've got, I got tossed by a wave. <laughs> I mean, it was, like, horrible. Like, it threw me under and the whole yeah, thing. Your mouth and all uh, that. My nose, my mouth. Uh, it was hate horrible. That. hate that. But I had no control of it, right? Yes. And I feel like, you know, when we doubt, when we, you know, we doubt or we fear or we don't, you know, have our trust completely put in God, then the circumstance, the situation that you are in, the problem that you are facing, it's going to toss you around. It's going to make your emotions go up and down like a roller coaster and you have no control of it because you have given control to the situation. You have literally just 
given that situation to control what you think, what you feel, everything. And so when we put our trust in God, the word of God says that he's a firm foundation yes. and that nothing can shake us when we stand on the rock who's Jesus Christ. And that is the reason that we stand firm in our faith and trusting in him, because that means that if we trust him, then he there's nothing that can move us. He is unmovable. Yes. Yes. You know, um, I, I went kayaking once. I'm going to try to do it again. And uh, my kayak, uh, my wife rams my kayak. I and don't my think kayak, that's true. And my kayak filled with water. He's trying to take me under with him. I was. I was messing with her. <laughs> it came back on me. And so here I am in this little, this little river, and a current's moving. And I'm trying to hold on to my kayak, and it's filling up with water. Of course, all the stuff in the kayak's going down the river. And, um, and, and I'm trying to withhold, I'm trying to literally, like, hold back mm -hmm. the current. Yep. Right? Because I think somehow that I can do that. I can. And, uh, yeah, no. And, <laughs> and I, I, I actually got to this moment where, like, it, it overtook me. Like, I almost thought I was actually going to drown for just a second. And I, I was like panic for a second, and um, and I just remember in that moment, like there's so often we try to control, right? We try to manhandle. We try to. And here's the thing: is <laughs> we've got to trust God. Like That's we have right. to lean on Him. Mm -hmm. You can't fight the world and and say, "Well, I've got enough will. I've got enough drive." That's not gonna cut it. That's, That's not right. gonna take care of it. You've got to lean on the Lord. You've got to hold on to him. Amen. Hold on to your faith. Amen. Hold on to that firm foundation. Yeah. He is the only thing. Because let me tell you, he's a heavenly father. What can he do? He can stop the current. That's right? right. He can stop the way. He can do the miraculous in our lives. That's and right. so absolutely love that. All right. Well, just uh, we're going to give. Fact number three. Yes. One, let's read the verse here, too. Uh, what I choose <laughs> determines what I experience. Um, we read, let's read James 1, so 7 through 8. Yeah. And it says, such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. Yeah. So what you choose today determines the experience you're going to have tomorrow. That's right. What you choose right now, and, and here understand your life is it's made up like this. What you sow today, you'll reap tomorrow, right? That's right. So what you choose today is going to determine the experience, what you're going to sow. Mm -hmm. And so it's so important right now that you begin to sow in this season. Mm -hmm. that we, we have a field in front of us. Yes. Right? Like I look out my front door, there's a big old field. And I think they're growing tobacco and they're growing something else. I don't know. Soy. I don't know what they're growing. I have no idea. I, I sound smart by saying that. Somebody told me they're growing tobacco. I, I, that's not my wheelhouse strength, whatever. But here's the thing is they go into a field and they have to sow mm -hmm. in a certain season. Yes. So that in the right season they can reap. That's right. And right now, you're in a sowing season. We're at the beginning of August. This is a new uh, this is a new year, a new school year we're going into. Mm -hmm. This is the season to sow. Nice. When we go into January, it's a season to sow. There are sowing times and there are reaping times. That's right. So when you understand that what you choose right now determines the experience you're going to have later, mm -hmm. that's critical. That's Absolutely. so That's so critical. That's so important. Yeah. Um, Dana, who was on that trip with us, she says, I remember when that happened. <laughs> she was collecting <laughs> all my flip flops and all Cell her and Robbie, phone, wallet. everything. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And in my precious phone, I had put in a Ziploc bag. It survived. It, it survived. Fine. Thank you, Jesus. Right. <laughs> that was the only thing I cared about. So. <laughs> lose it all. Don't lose my cell phone. So three critical things that, that we need in this season where we're at. And, uh, you know, there's so much great scripture that um, that we can memorize um, and I have a bunch of it here trust in the Lord with all your heart do yes. not depend on or lean on your own understanding That's right. in all your ways right seek his will in all you do and he will show you which path to take that's out of Proverbs 3 5 and 6 um, I, I love you can just go down through here one of just one of my verses that just 
was a critical verse in my life. In Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plan I have for you, right? He says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. There are plans for good and not disaster to give That's you right. a future and a hope. And I love this. In those days when you pray. So let me just go back to the person that's searching for an answer, that's looking for some wisdom. This is in those days when you pray, I will listen. I, God, will listen. Yes. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. I will end your captivity and restore your fortunes. I will gather you out of the nation. It goes on. But I love that. In the day when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. So that's... Man, that's that's just that's for someone right now. I believe that's for someone right now. That's maybe in a season of uh, God. I've been looking. I've been seeking. I need a breakthrough. That's for you. Wholehearted. Hold to these promises. Amen. Hold to these promises. Um, is there anything else you wanted to share tonight before we kind of? No, I think everything goes back to. Um, you know, we we read the very first scripture where it talked about you know the Lord. Um, you know, asking for wisdom and that God would give it to us. And um, it goes back into our three points that, you know, if we grow in depth and we, we invest in our time with our relationship with the Holy Spirit, the body of Christ, and the Word of God, you know, God always wants to speak to us. And it's through these times of investing and spending time with the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. with the body of Christ, and with the Word of God that He can speak to us and minister to us in every season of our life. Yes, absolutely. Ms. Kathy said, um, just a reminder, that our choices uh, not only affect us, but they also affect others, uh, affect uh, others in our lives, whether good or bad. Absolutely. That's absolutely true. Um, your right decision actually does affect people. Mm -hmm. Your wrong We know our wrong decisions do. Yes. But our right decisions do as well. Absolutely. And uh, I love. <laughs> I always try to remind people. People are watching. Yes. People are watching your life. Not not your Facebook life. Your real life. Yes. People are watching your real. Your neighbor is watching you when you, you do something outside and you get frustrated and you're cussing, or you're kicking something around, and you're screaming and yelling. Your neighbor hears when you're screaming at your kid, yeah. or your husband, or your spouse, or whatever. Your your neighbors are watching. Right, the the person that you don't think they don't know me when you go to the gas station, when you go to the Walmart, when you go to wherever you go, you go get you know food or g go out to you. people are watching. Yeah, and so your life reflects more than you realize. So here's the thing: is don't live, don't try to live a perfect life, but mm -hmm. live a spirit led life. That's okay? right. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. Yes. If ever if so, if everywhere you go, somebody's watching. And say, Holy Spirit, lead me. Right? I don't want to be fake. I don't want to pr pretend to be this, but then at home be something else. That's right. Lord, let me live out who you've called me to be. Give me the grace and the strength and the ability to to be who you've called me to be. And uh, and that's the wonderful thing about the Lord is that He wants to empower us to be the ambassador the, of Him, right? To be Amen. the hands and feet. So. Yes. Uh, so important for us. So, so important for us. Yeah. So I think it's easy for us to have those cop out phrases, you know, of I'm not perfect or, you know, the Lord's still working in my, in my life um, or, you know, God loves me just the way I am. And uh, but truly, you know, yes, God is still working in our lives and he is constantly working to um, perfect us, you know, and but truly until the Lord comes back, we won't be perfect. Um, but living as a spirit-led life is so important because we are ambassadors. We are the representation of Christ. It, it's it, we don't wear the name or the badge of Christians just because it sounds good or just because you know we took a moment to accept Jesus Christ in our lives and then that was it. We truly have to live it out because we are the example and we are called to draw others to Christ. And so. You know, uh, Paul said, you know, it was I think it was Paul that talked about, you know, I have to die. Like, I need to die so he can grow in me, so he can live in me. Yeah. I need to diminish everything about me, my flesh, my desires needs to die in order for him to increase in me. Yes. Yes. Well, we said that we were going to be short. I'm sorry. <laughs> in our, 
our time is our time is going away on us. But uh, hey, listen, we want to pray with you tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, we're we're thankful and we're celebrating what God has done in our lives uh, as pastors and leaders here uh, here at Gateway. We're celebrating eight years, uh, but we're also celebrating what God's done in the lives of those that are are a part of our church or yes. have been a part of our yes. church. We're so we're celebrating what God's done in their lives, Amen. and we're excited about for those that are that are going to come. And our heart is still for our community that mm-hmm. God would would give us the ability to reach uh, the almost seventy percent in Cheatham County that are unchurched, that That's do right. not attend church. And uh, I believe that that that's still the heart of God Amen. to reach the lost. Right? We know that that's yeah. part of the commission, and so um, we want to pray with you. I want to believe with you tonight. I I just, as I was talking, I just felt like the Lord was saying to me, there's someone right now that's in that critical position of saying, hey, God, I've been asking, but Lord, uh, you haven't given me the answers, the direction. And I just felt like the Lord was saying, this is for you. Stay faithful. Keep seeking. Uh, Look, lay down anything you got to lay down. The the more that you come to the place of abandoning Mm -hmm. what you, like, Lord, I'm going to abandon it all for you. Listen, that is the best place to be. And so I believe God's going to give you breakthrough. Amen. And I believe it's going to come soon. Amen. So I'm just speaking that over whoever that's for. Yes. So, Well, let's pray tonight. Um, let's pray. I want to believe with you. Uh, we talked about three critical relationships. The relationship with the Spirit of God and Holy Spirit. We want to keep developing that. A relationship with the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. And then also the relationship with the Word of God. Amen. We want to keep developing that. Right. Keep keep that relationship fresh. So. That's right. So, Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for each person that's listening and watching tonight. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you already know what they're going through, what their heart cry is, what the things they've prayed for, Lord. You already know the the very difficult situations they're facing. Mm -hmm. Lord, you know, Father, the financial situations, Lord. You know, Father, the the depression, Lord, the anxiety, Father. You know, Father, Lord, the overwhelmed feelings they may be having. Lord, you know, Lord even the relational issues that they're having, Father, the things that they're struggling with. Lord, you know, Lord, what's going on in their family with their children, Father. You know, Lord. And Father, I pray right now, Lord, in or- that we would all grow, continue to grow, that we would yes. say in this season that we're in right now, in the beginning of August in 2020, Father, we're going to sow in, in this season. We're yes. going to get in your word. We're going to be determined. God, I want your word to get inside of me so that I can grow. Lord, I want to draw close. I want to know your Holy Spirit. I want your Holy Spirit to be alive and active. I want to be spiritually alive, Father. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that Lord, that you have called us for this season, Lord. If we're breathing air right now, you've called us for this season, Lord. And there is a plan and a purpose. I thank you, Lord, that when we seek you, Father, and we always find you, Lord, I pray, Lord, that we would abandon everything, Lord, any hindrance, Lord, in our lives, any distractions in our lives, Father, Lord, that we would get desperate for you again, Lord, and as we hunger for you, as we become desperate for you, Lord, your promise is that you meet us, that you don't leave us, Father, but you meet us, Lord. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would give the wisdom that's needed, the discernment that's Mm -hmm. needed, Father. I pray, Lord, that you would continue to go before us and come behind us, Lord, as you have been faithful. I pray, Lord, that you would continue to be faithful in our lives, and Lord, that we would thank you and praise you for your faithfulness. Lord, we thank you tonight that on this Wednesday night, Lord, August 5th, 2020, Lord, that you've been faithful to to Leslie and I. You've been faithful to our family. You've been faithful to our church. I pray, Lord. Lord, that we would continue to stay faithful to you, and Lord, that we would continue to see miraculous things happen in this year and in the years to come. Father, we thank you, Lord, and we ask this in your precious name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. I love you, we love you, we appreciate you. Don't forget to join us this Sunday. This Sunday, we're going to jump back into our... um, our, our series on who's got the keys right. we've got two more sundays and it's been good very we've, good we've it's been great powerful. we've had some powerful uh and even the two that uh, you know we had two guest speakers did a phenomenal job so Amen. i can't wait for this sunday to be with you so if you don't have a, a church and you're here locally we'd love to see you love to have you with us and our services start at 10 o'clock Amen. so we love you god bless god bless